who can do math if you're worried about the sun burning out? You, right. you can't focus. Yes. So I think it's okay to stop and, you know, life skills, coping skills, those are all really important things that they're going to need forever. And it's okay to pause everything, set it aside and focus on that. Hi there, and welcome to the Homeschool Sisters podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm Kara. And we're two homeschooling moms doing this homeschooling thing right beside you. We don't have it all figured out, but one thing we know for sure is that homeschooling is a lot easier when you have a sister by your side. Hi, Kate. Hey, Kara. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, we have a new question this week. Okay. I'll jump right in and read it. Um, and it's from, I hope I'm saying her name right. I, we, we had to look it up. Um, Berta or Bertha, maybe? Um, but I recognize her from Facebook, um, so I hope we said your name right. <laughs> it's a great um, reader. Yes. Um, okay, so it says, I just finished listening to your podcast and just loved it. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. That is nice. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I feel like you both are very real about homeschooling, about what homeschooling is, and I can relate to many of your posts and articles. And so she says, do you happen to have a child that worries a lot about big questions like life, death, sickness, bad things that might happen, injuries, bee stings, cigarette smoke in public as we're in a non-smoking house, or poison ivy in the woods? My almost seven-year-old is a worrier. She was always more anxious and careful than her peers, which I can relate to because me too, I was a shy and careful child. But sometimes I see myself excluding books and or topics from our homeschool because I'm afraid it might trigger an anxiety. How would you, have, how would you approach this? Do you have any experience with this? Okay, so Great when I, <laughs> Yeah. And when I saw this question, I felt bad because my first reaction was, oh, this is good because you are like my worry guru. <laughs> um. Because you wrote that post on Simple Homeschool oh. called Little Kids with Big Worries. Yeah. And I was so happy to see somebody addressing that because, um, and I'm so glad that she's asking this question because I was a worrier as a kid, like a I super too. worrier. And so my second thought after, good, we get to talk about worrying, um, was good because I'm so glad that she's taking it seriously mm-hmm. and that, you know, she's seeing it as something important to address. The other good thing is that you were a school psychologist. Um, did you run into this a lot when I were- did. I had a lot of kids who worried. So it's interesting. I mean, I was a warrior growing up. I come from a family of warriors and I always connected with the kids who worried but it's interesting having your own. It's very different because you're so in it. Um, so I, I see it kind of from all sides right now because we are in it. Yeah. <laughs> and in it for a while. Yeah. And I know you said um, in that post that your oldest is a world-class warrior. <laughs> he is a world-class warrior. That's what yeah. we call him. <laughs> yeah. He has much experience in the land of worry. Much like she said, my, my son has just been a warrior from the beginning. He was just, not that he was more, ca- he's not more careful in his actions But he's more care. I don't know how to describe. He's more careful after the fact. Like he lets things stew, and then they come to a boil later. So things that seem really benign in the moment will come back a week or two later to bite us in the rear end. Yes, (laughs) and or their ugly hand. Do they do they come up at night? They come up at night a lot. They come up at all hours. Okay, I have the hardest time when they come up at night because I think when you're it, when you're in the throes of a worry surge, because it kind of, I think anxious kids are always anxious kids, but it swells. And when you're in one of those, it takes up, 
at least for me, it takes up all my mental energy. Like our life revolves around the worry and it's just always present and I'm always trying to talk him down or calm him down or help him through. And so when I'm sleeping and someone comes to me at 2 a.m. with a worry, I am not the best version of myself (laughs) at 2 a.m. And I have a really hard time with that because I think you're on all day and then you know, at two, I don't want someone creeping in and talking about hell or, you know, global warming or the sun burning out selfishly, just because you need to, you're not going to have any stores if you don't get any sleep. Yeah. Well, and I don't think any of us is, I've never met a person that's the best version of themselves. (laughs) (laughs) But it's terrible time. (laughs) The other thing is, um, you talked about in your post how um, then lack of it kind of feeds into each other because lack of sleep can make worries worse and then if you're not able to sort of be at your best in terms of helping your child work through it it just kind of gets into this vicious cycle of worries taking over and not being able to handle each one as it comes up and they just get bigger and scarier and more overwhelming and yeah it snowballs. That's the thing about yeah. worries. Yeah. Well, a couple things that I remember from that post um, is that you talk about naming worries um, and letting your kids know. Because I think I remember as a kid knowing that my worry wasn't exactly normal. Mm-hmm. So how can you talk about how like talk to your kids and and explain to them what worries are and that you know there's nothing wrong with them for worrying um it's actually it's kind of a way of um i think you said like protecting yes. you know that you get worries because you you want to be careful not be careful but um yeah but it does i mean worry serves a purpose and that's something that i'm always my, my little guy is a thinker, and so I've learned to come at it from the thinking side. And to now that he's eight, we can talk a little bit about his brain and how his brain's working. But worry is actually, it protects you. It has a biological purpose, and everyone has it. And some of us might have more of it than others, but if you didn't have it, we wouldn't survive because it's what tells you not to do that <laughs> and to tread lightly and be careful and go slowly. So um, we talk about it a lot. We use um, m- the Mind Up curriculum and we use uh, an app called Headspace. We have a bunch of resources that we've used over the years, but just to talk about it sort of as a car alarm and his is more sensitive than others. So it sets it off. But to know that it serves a purpose, it's normal, it's temporary, you can work through it and it will go away, even though it doesn't feel like that in the moment, and also that you can manage it. I have anxiety as an adult, Mm -hmm. and sometimes when you're in the midst of that, it just feels like this is not going to get better. And so being able to tell kids, because they don't have that life experience. I mean, I have 30 mer- mer- years of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> of life experience to draw from that tells me, you know, it's always, it always gets better. You know, even mm-hmm. if it takes a long time, it always gets better. Kids don't have that. So, no. you know, to be able to tell them it's going to be okay again, you know, I think that's super, right. super powerful. I actually need to write up, I have a draft post that I've had forever and I just haven't finished it, is exactly that, to look back and see, because he's eight years old and he's conquered so many fears in eight years that we have actually listed them out. We call them as worry wins. And so when he's scared about whatever the new thing is, he can look back and be like, oh, remember when I used to be afraid of crickets or fire or carbon monoxide, he can look back and say, oh, I worked through all those. So it's almost like he's beating worry. And oh, he can see I love winning, that. Even it doesn't feel like it in the moment. I love, when you said worry wins, I got chills, seriously. I, oh. I love that. That is so fantastic. Okay. But it's hard to remember it in the moment that you've done it before and you can do it again. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And yeah, especially when you're facing something big and scary. And in, in that post, you talked about, um, you know, modeling coping mechanisms and modeling things. And um, 
you know, the importance of being honest too, that adults have these things. Like there was a day last week and I just woke up and it was just a bad anxiety day. So it was the first time I remembered telling my kids, I'm having an anxious day. I'm having a lot of worries today. So I'm going to you know, do things a little bit differently. This is what we're going to do. And they were really receptive to it. And they were really surprised too, because it was sort of this like, oh, mom, you have that too sometimes, you know, and it opened up some communication about it. Um, And I don't know, like in our generation, I, I don't know if maybe um, people just didn't take kids as seriously (laughs) or or what it was. Seen and not heard. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when I would have a worry, it was a little bit more of, you know, let's not talk about this so much. Let's, you know, trying to move on from it. Um, Mm -hmm. And that doesn't help. (laughs) No, it doesn't. I mean, if you you stuff it down, we have um, a lot of warriors in my family and a history of alcoholism on one side. And it's completely connected if you think about it because you're keeping it all inside and you're self-medicating you're not allowed to let it out so it's healthy I think to teach kids right now to talk about whatever's going on if it's a worry a sadness whatever you should give them the tools to talk about it and explore it and cope with it now it's a light skill yes absolutely and you mentioned in your post too um coping skills. Can you talk a little bit about some of the coping skills you're working on with your kids and what you're trying to encourage? Sure. Um, Oh, a lot. (laughs) So we have, um, first of all, just talking about it and being able to name it and identify just, you know, I'm not feeling great and this might be why. Um, And then I find with my kids, and I think it's common for a lot of kids, is that they can't always talk about the reasons why or the specifics of why they're feeling the way they are, but you can still identify, I'm not feeling great. I I'm worried. And then how do you work through that when you're feeling worried, what works for you? And it's different for everyone and what might work this time might not work the next time. Um, and that's kind of the nature of anxiety. So my son Uh, We do a lot of mindfulness here, so we read a lot of mindfulness books. We use a mindfulness app. We do yoga. Um, These aren't things that we're doing every day because, I mean, it would be wonderful if we could, (laughs) but there aren't enough hours in the day. Um, We do a lot of drawing. My son is very, actually, all three of my kids are super artistic, and they just, they're calm when they're creating. So if we're having an off day, I might clear some space in the schedule to do art. Um, My son has a worry basket in his room, which isn't really even a basket. I call it that to make it seem nicer than it is. It's a tub, (laughs) a dishpan, and it's filled with um, mindfulness CDs, like relaxation CDs. Um, Those, what are those things called that the Like I used to have them on my desk at work and there are these tubes with liquid in them and the colored um, dots go up and down and that's calming. He has a journal in there, a doodle diary, um, a weighted blanket, uh, headphones. He is very triggered by sounds. So if he's already anxious and he hears something, um, whether it's a thunderstorm or just some weird noise that he doesn't know what it is, it, it... escalates in his mind and he gets more anxious so we have um noise canceling headphones that he uses too i love your you have a worry basket post um Mm -hmm. on your site and i i used it and i I adapted it for kind of what we needed in our house but it is packed with good ideas i mean that you have so many good um you know, like you said, those toys, those like water wheel yeah. toy things um, that can just help you. It's it's almost like a meditation, you know, to watch those flow. Um, you had mentioned the Headspace app. Um, mm-hmm. We use that here. And I love it. It's free in the beginning. Um, and so you can do, I think it's like 10 days or something, absolutely free and test That's it out, great. which is super nice. Um, this book is excellent, too. 
Oh, okay. I didn't know he had a book. Oh, yes. Oh. It's an interesting story. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll have yeah, to look for his book. It's a good one. Do you know what, the, what um, I know his name is, is, is it Andy? <laughs> but I'm trying to think what his name is. Andy Puddingcombe? Okay. Right? Do you know what the book is called? I think it's just called Headspace. Okay, well, we can look it up and put it in the show notes so that people can find it. Um, but yeah, you have so many good resources in there that I, I borrowed from it and created um, bedtime baskets, I call it, for, for my two. That. Because, and, and again, they're not baskets. <laughs> 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 they're like these cloth cubes. Um, but we have a lot of worries that come up at night, and it, it's something I do too so I understand what happens where during the day you're busy you know you're doing stuff and then as you get settled down for bedtime all of a sudden that's when the worries pop up and so I borrowed a bunch of your ideas CDs different books um coloring books those like um mandala coloring books and things my daughter especially really loves the intricate coloring books um and having the water wheels and Mm -hmm. just having some oh and like a lavender spray um because scent you know really really helps and um so yeah we we've built those and then instead of them coming to get me the minute there's a worry they reach for something in the basket and then they know that if something big is happening you know they can Mm -hmm. they can come and get me or whatever but at least they have a few things and I'm so grateful for those because I never had anything like that as a kid and so I just you know would sort of lay there paralyzed at night like afraid to fall asleep you know because of something and um I'm really grateful for that post because it it's giving my kids tools to help Thank them you. deal with their worry. And then you have another really good post, um, a mindful month of books, where oh, you yes. list a ton of great books. So we'll have to link to that too. Um, Thank you. Because like I said, you're like my worry guru. You're helping uh, me. <laughs> whenever we're going through it as an outlet, I write about it because I just need to, I know other people are going through it too, but it's so hard when you're in it to talk about, you get all muddled, like what, oh, what happened yeah. first and you get in this whole cycle. Um, so it's been helpful for me to just write about it. Well, um, I'm glad you do. Really receptive. And I'm glad that you're open about it because, you know, I feel like there are so many people who are dealing with that. Um, with their kids and it's not something that all of us feel super comfortable sharing you know with people all the time so mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad that you do because it's it's real and it affects our kids I mean we yes. know that because we were kids that had it it affects yes. our kids it affects our lives it affects our parenting and then you know it's it's interesting that when you have a kid that worries then you can you're worrying about your kid. And yes. um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, I guess how do worries differ from like stress or anxiety or can they be an indicator of something kind of bigger going on that maybe you need to get a little help or talk to somebody about? That's a great question. And I think it all boils down to how it's impacting your day-to-day functioning. And if you are making... If it is hard for you to do the things that you normally should be doing, if you find that you're wanting to avoid certain things, if it's impacting just the way you would live your life if it was not there in a considerable way, then that is an indication of you know, when worry becomes anxiety. Or um, in my son's case, he has sensory processing disorder, which is this confusing relationship with worry when, when one, it's like a chicken egg situation and you don't know which one sets off first, but if his sensory processing disorder is ramping up, then his anxiety ramps up at the same time. So what we'll do, we know that in that moment when it's all coming to a head that we need to go back to OT and see a counselor at the same time to hit it from both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think people shouldn't be afraid to seek out counseling because it can be so helpful Um, I can say as a parent, just to have another adult in the situation helping you navigate it, even coming from a psych background, it's hard when you're in it to see 
the entire picture because he's your child or she's your child and you've got your own histories and it's, you need someone to step outside and be able to say, okay, this, this is no big deal. Focus on this. Here's some new strategies. And it's just another person on your team and it's helpful for for your children as they grow up too, I think, to have someone else that they can talk to because as open as you want to keep communications, there's going to be times that they might not want to talk to you and that's okay. Yeah. (laughs) But to have another adult in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so one of the things she's asking about too is, um, you know, avoiding certain topics or books in their homeschool because they trigger an anxiety. And I know you talked in your post about anxiety triggers and learning those and then learning how to deal with them. Um, so is it okay to avoid something that's causing stress and or that you know is going to just cause stress in your homeschool? Yes and no. I think there's a line. In our family, my son could, was terrified of television, had an actual television phobia because of his anxiety mixed together with the sensory processing and the sound sensitivity. And for a very long period of time, and we weren't big TV people to begin with, we just didn't watch TV because it was easier for him, for his, you know, his mental health and for our ears (laughs) and our life to just not turn it on. But if it's something like you know, going in a car or, um, you know, avoiding a place that the rest of your family loves, then you have, you have to decide when to push and when to pull back. And so, um, this past fall, my son became afraid of hiking, which our family is outside hiking all the time. And it was just kind of one of these fluky things that came up that surprised us. No real, root cause. Um, but we powered through and we decided he and I talked about how we know deep down that he loves to hike and he loves to be outside and that's like his thing. So he doesn't want to be afraid of that. So we just set up every single day we would hike until he got over it. And he didn't want, he'd, he'd fight me at the beginning, but I'd say, remember we said we were going to do this because you want to be able to hike. And we did. And it only took maybe 10 days of, you know, tears initially, and then he'd be okay. And then we try again the, the next day. Um, but that was something for our family. We can't avoid being outside. We're outside. That's part of our, who we are. Um, but TV was something we could, he, we still have not been to a movie theater with him because I know it would be a lot. I think we're going to this year, but, um, he'll need support through that. So it's just knowing your kid and your family and what you don't want to get into a trap where you're avoiding things because of the anxiety that you won't drive anywhere because of anxiety. That's when, when anxiety gets so out of control that people, get true phobias and agoraphobia and thing, things like that, where you just, you don't want to fall into an avoidance trap. But if it's a temporary situation that you can support your child through, then I would say that it's okay. Sure. If that makes sense. That makes total sense. Um, I remember we went through a time when my son was really freaked out by um, books or videos or anything about mummies. And I remember we got a really cool um, Egyptology book as like a birthday or Christmas present that year. And the minute he opened it, he looked at me with big eyes and I took it and I put it away for probably a year. And the thing is, it didn't hurt anything that he didn't want to learn about Egyptology at that point. So I thought, okay, this is okay. You know, this is something where it's going to pass and it's probably going to pass on its own and it's probably going to pass with maturity. But You know, when you're talking about things, like you said, that are keeping you from being able to function as a family or they're impacting your other kids. Right. Yeah. So (laughs) I I think that makes a lot of sense. We had a year that my son was afraid of the pool because he he was three and he had tripped over the the some sort of cap that they had in the center of the kiddie pool and he fell face first in the water and when he freaks out, he freezes. So he could have just stood up, but 
he just froze there. So it took me, you know, two seconds to get him out um, and just lift him up by his shirt and he was fine. But then it escalated into this fear of my daughter, who was 19 months at the time, that she would trip over. So he wouldn't let her in the pool. He wouldn't let her near water. And the whole summer was like that. But I had to work him through it because it was a very hot summer. I was very pregnant and she should be allowed to play at the water table. So it was, you know, that's just an example of when they're younger he, he didn't even understand fully, wasn't able to communicate what was going on at that time, but I was able to recognize it. And it was one of those situations where not going to avoid going to swimming pools or the beach because you're afraid she's going to fall in water. Just, I don't know, you have to yeah. judge the degree of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting how sometimes the ways that worry manifests is the protection of others. There's different ways that worry can manifest. It doesn't necessarily look like somebody having a panic attack or a child crying or, I mean, sometimes it can come out as behavior issues or unexpected mm-hmm. things too, right? So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the wonderful things about just being able to have this time with our kids and get to know them and get to know their worries and be able to help them through it. Um, and, and reading one of your posts yesterday to kind of refresh myself, I, I'm, I'm not sure which one it was, but it just stood out to me how lucky we are to be able to homeschool these little warriors. Because I know the one you're, I don't remember which one it is either, but I had a conversation with a neighbor at the bus stop when my daughter was still going to school and she was talking about how one of her children was struggling with a lot of the stuff um, that my son was struggling about. We were talking about OT and therapists and whatnot. Not. And and she said that must be one of the perks, isn't it? That you can just stop yeah. and focus full throttle on this right now and conquering this right now. Because the poor kids, when you're in school and you're struggling with that, you get you have even less time. You know, and who can do math if you're worried about the sun burning out? You, right, you can't focus. Yes, so I think it's okay to stop and you know life skills, coping skills. Those are all really important things that they're going to need forever, and it's okay to pause everything, set it aside, and focus on that. You also mentioned. Did you say it's the mind up? curriculum? Yes. What What is that? Can you tell me more about that? So it's, it's meant for public schools. It's created by a nonprofit that I believe Goldie Hawn is involved in because she wrote a book too that I have that I can link to. Um, but it's a great program for kids and it uh, it's, I believe it's K through eight and they have it in three different levels. And it talks about neuroscience, basically. It talks about the function of anxiety, why it exists, and how you can, you know, use your mind to conquer your worries. It's been really great. They have a poster that my son has in his room, and he knows that the amygdala is the center, you know, his alarm system, and he can talk about that. And that, for a kid that loves science, that makes sense to him, to know the function of anxiety and that he has power over it. Um, So that's been a great curriculum. And we also love um, From Warrior to Warrior by Dan Peters. That is a great book for both. They have a parent version and a kid version. And we'll do a book club (laughs) at least once a year where I'm like, it's time for us to read this again. And I'll read the adults and he reads the kid and we talk about it because it just, it makes it... It calls worry the worry monster, and it explains how he changes shape, and he tries new tricks, and it makes it, you know, the I like the neuroscience piece for him, but also it's that that makes it relatable for little kids too, and that's been helpful. Oh, good. Okay, we can link to all of that, all those, and then a bunch of your different posts that you've written, and we are just gonna fill up that. <laughs> <laughs> that show notes section on our website, thehomeschoolsisters.com, with good resources for um, parents who have kids that worry because you you have done the research. You are like the worry <laughs> expert. So this is this is good. Um, I, I, before before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you, um, it, you know, worry. I'm a worrier, so I figure that you know my kids probably inherited it from me a little bit. Some of their worrying. Um, so is worry hereditary? I mean, is it, is it connected to 
is it in our DNA? I mean, are some kids just I kind of... I think it is. I think, you know, you, you can, you recognize that early on that some kids are just more cautious than their peers. Like, like, like even the question read today. Yeah. Um, I know I was just, I can remember being two and three years old and worrying about things. Like I have worries that go back really young. So, um, I know I have warriors in my family. I can recognize it in my son. Uh, so I would say yes. And I'm sure there's been multiple studies that I can't think of up the top of my head, but <laughs> it does, yeah. does definitely run in families. So what about if you're a mom who's a worrier, um, what, what can you do? I mean, like I said, for a long time, my instinct was to not make a big deal about it and try to play it down in front of my kids because I didn't want to project my worries onto them and make their worrying worse. And, you know, I I guess I thought maybe instead of it being DNA, it was if they see me worrying, they're going to somehow like get that from me, like catch it, you know, that, which I don't, I, that doesn't make sense now <laughs> thinking about it. But, um, so, I mean, as, as parents, like, what can we do? Well, I think it's just to model, model coping, to talk about it. Um, I do think there's an environmental piece. I, I mean, I think you can't totally tease that out. If you, My mom always talks about how my grandmother during thunderstorms would seat them on the basement steps and sprinkle them with holy water and say Hail Marys. And if your mom does that, you're probably going to be afraid of thunderstorms yes. <laughs> because you thought you were going to die when you were little. So, I mean, there there's a bit of that. I wouldn't go overboard and sprinkle holy water on people. But, <laughs> like, I think it's okay to say, hey... Like, you know, you're a warrior. I'm a warrior. This is what works for me. When I'm anxious, I talk to my son all the time. Like, you're not the only one. When I get anxious, I'll do a brain dump. I'll go for a run. I'll do yoga. Like, I just know what works for me. And your job is to figure out your worry and figure out what's going to work for you. Like, what makes you feel good? When you're feeling cruddy, what will make you feel good? Is it dancing in the kitchen? Is it drawing? Do that. And and allow yourself the space to do that when you're not feeling so great so that you can, you know, you can bounce back from it. Yeah. And, and so I would say self-care is a huge piece. I love your post what anxiety needs oh. because I think it's just, it speaks so well to that. It's what you, what your anxiety needs. Yeah. And it's different for everyone. Yeah. Because anxiety is is just a jerk sometimes <laughs> yeah it, it pops up out of nowhere um you know like I think you said earlier the things that work one time do not work the next time mm-hmm. um I mean there are times when I'm anxious and all I want is just a big hug from my husband and to just have him you know kind of hold me and tell me everything's going to be okay and there's other times when I still love him I still feel the same level of affection toward him but I do not want anybody touching me for just a few minutes, you know, I just need, um, something different in that moment. And I think we talked about in our overwhelm, the first episode we did our overwhelm post about like, um, making a list of things that work for you because sometimes when you're in the midst of that, you just, you can't even remember, you can't even think about the most basic self-care things. And, you know, it's like, um, and, and we've talked to where, you know, you know, other times it's, it's just about making it a priority um, and about taking that time and knowing like 20 minutes of yoga is going to help me right now. Right. And I'm right. just going to make myself go do it. And even if I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. And you had told me um, about the yoga glow. Um, yes. It, it's like, it, it's... You can get it on your computer, you can get it on your phone, you can get it streaming, and I love it. And they have not only yoga on there, um, but they have various meditations, and it's so targeted for specific things that they have. Um, They have a meditation, a midnight meditation for mamas. If you know Aww. you're a mom that's that's worried in the middle of the night about something, worried about your kids, um, they have ones about if you're feeling a little overwhelmed uh, by parenting in that moment, and I love it because it brings you back to that. Yes, I'm an exhausted caregiver, but I 
I'm exhausted because I have so much love for these people and I'm, you know, just pouring right. that out and stuff. So there's a lot of really good resources there. I love, love, love Yoga Glow. And they have 10 minute meditations, five minute meditations, 15 so minute for you. yoga classes, 20 minute yoga classes, um, hour and a half yoga classes. I have never done one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so they have the shorter things. Um, it's, a, it's a really good resource for moms. I can't recommend that highly enough. So Yoga has been a godsend for me. And I, I, for years, used it with my kids, just waiting for the moment that it would click. And I'd have them, you know, it was anything but zen. I'd be doing my downward dog and they'd be crawling under and over. But eventually, <laughs> they... They do it too. A lot of times, they I am at the point now where they will do yoga with me, and they enjoy that. And my daughter has done it on her own; has popped in a DVD to do it. And I think it's just a good skill to have to be able to be present with yourself and, yeah, you know, just make yourself feel better. Yeah. Just last night, I was having kind of a cranky minute, um, mm-hmm. and I said to my son, "You know what?" I'm going to do just a short yoga class. I think it's going to help me feel a lot better. And he said, yeah, it usually does. You know, like he's, and so he's getting that and he's seeing that, that taking a step like that and prioritizing self-care, it, it does help and it does work. And I want my kids to have some of these skills as they're growing up because I really didn't. And it took me a long time to figure out what helped me to feel better and what helped me to get out of some of those really nasty mental Mm -hmm. tornadoes that you can get into. And, um, definitely yoga helps. Like you said, running helps. Um, yes. And I I think when we were growing up, there was such a stigma attached to, it was, you know, if you admitted that you were anxious or worried, it was almost like a weakness. Yeah. Whereas we all have our things. We all have our baggage. And some people may worry. Some people may be angry. It's just whatever you're predisposed to. Um, so, yeah, you, you figure out in college or after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're hoping that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and giving them a jump start by giving them the tools now. Yes. And I, I think that's so valuable. And to make that a part of our homeschooling curriculum I think is completely worth it um I mean as much as our kids need to know how to do math and you know they're going to need to learn you know some like reading and spelling and you know they'll use those things in later life I think these are right up there in terms of skills that if we can give them to our kids we're setting our kids up for success so absolutely yeah all right well I know people are going to be, <laughs> if they're dealing with worries in their house, they are going to want to run over to the show notes where we're going to have all the links to the posts we mentioned today. Kate's um, Little Kids with Big Worries that was on Simple Homeschool, your Worry Basket post, um, your Mindful Month of Books post, and then um, you've mentioned so many good books today. Um, another one I saw that you mentioned um, in one of your posts is the um, Highly Sensitive Child by oh, yes. Elaine Aaron. Oh, I can't believe I didn't bring that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. Um, and then I saw... I was one of those, and so were you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and somehow we've become these adults that are still sensitive. How does that work? Um, and it then, all works out. It gives you hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, um, and Last Child in the Woods, I, I saw you mention, and we talked yes. about that, you know, previously, too. Um, and I in knowing you have started prioritizing that outside time a little bit more, um, even when it's my own worry or anxiety that's creeping up. And I am continually amazed at how getting into a green space just clears the mental space. It's so powerful. And he has a lot of science to back that up. So we'll include that book. We'll include all the books and all the links and tons of good resources. And I'm so... Oh, and it's at thehomeschoolsisters.com, of course. But I'm so grateful for this question. And I'm so grateful for you that you write about this stuff and that you can, you know, share your experience as a mom and, you know, your background. Um, 
Thank as you. the school psychologist because it's it's important and this is important stuff. So I'm glad we got Thank to talk you. about it today. But Thank right. you so much. It was a great question. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kate. Thank you, Kara. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.